Wait, what? Zombie threat at home? What have I done? I thought we cleared all that. Oh, yeah, and everybody's got grenade launchers. This could be an issue. I haven't even got any weapons. Oh, my Jesus Christ. Either run to my storage locker and grab some shotgun ammo. Stop blowing everything up, for fuck's sake. I do my bit to stop the horde, but it seems my team are working against me. Oh, my God. Will you fucking behave, you silly cow? Whoever built that fence did an incredible job. With the threat dealt with. Yeah, thank fuck for that. I confiscate everybody's grenade launchers. And seeing as everybody's suffering from friendly fire, I stand still for an incredibly long time to give everyone chance to heal. I then swap to my leader, Laurel, because it's time to become a sheriff. Talk to Greg of the Scrappers. I'm always up for a fight. I don't know why I always do this, but I just like to take things off road, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, the pickup can take it, I think. I make my way to the Scrappers until I get a blast from the past. Oh, it's the Burninator! Oh, did I leave anything in the boot? One second, let me have a quick look. Oh, yeah, I did. Nothing I'm gonna currently use. Moving on, I get to the Scrappers. What's up, boys? How's it going? But you know me, I can be a bit of a menace. Sorry about that. I tried to chat to their leader, Greg, but it turns out they've made are incredibly rude. These guys have some pretty serious firepower. Come on, Greg, where you two, bud? Come on. Sheriff, I haven't heard from the deaf rejects in a while. I'm worried something terrible has happened to them. So Greg joins the team on a temporary basis so we can go and check in on the deaf rejects. But when I get there, I try to stick a massive thing through a little hole. I fit through there? Uh, I'd say no. That turns out to be bad news for Greg. You alright, Greg? You really didn't come very well prepared, did you? Unfortunately for Greg, I'm well and truly stuck. Greg, you, you got this, mate. You got this, right? One second. The radio's there to help you. We teleport to safety. Yeah, hey, look at that. But it's bad news for the death rejects. Oh, damn it, they've turned. They may have rejected death, but that motherfucker's got Tinder premium. Might as well search their corpses. <laughs> Just because I'm a sheriff doesn't mean, you know, we can't grave rob. Pack of nutritious snacks. Oh, nice. Well, Greg, you go uh, take out the remaining zombies, and I'll just sort out the bodies. Unfortunately, they've only got screwdrivers and damaged guns, although I do also find a strange note that has geographical coordinates labelled rally point. And if I had to take a guess, I'd say these guys aren't fans of off-road racing. So me and my main lad, Greggy boy, head over to have a little look. When we get there, it seems their trailer park has been abandoned. What's up, boys? But my bones chill when I find yet another note. This tattered note shows three locations labelled potential targets. So after a quick chat with Greg, we come to a decision. One of the potential targets on this note is where the death rejects lived. I bet whoever wrote this killed them. And this one is my base, but it's crossed out. Maybe they saw our defences and decided to bail? And this last target? Oh, shit. It's my place. Greg's mates then jump on the radio to say they're under attack. Yep, we gotta get back. Come on, Greg. We gotta go save your friends. And we desperately race back to try and save everyone. We gotta race back. Come on, Greg. We'll save your friends and your family and whoever else is there. You know what I mean? Actually, I just realised, isn't it weird that there's no children in the apocalypse? But then I guess I suppose that is survival of the fittest. We rock up to Greg's place. The sheriffs are coming. But these fuckers won't be having a happy ending. I charge in and pop the face off the first. Greg, I got this. But realise bullets take time and accuracy, so decide to carpet bomb them with burning diesel. Yeah, get fucked, son. And ignoring that Greg's friends now have some singed eyebrows, I think that went incredibly well. Hey, look, he's turning. He's turning. So I'm going to take him out again. Boom. Good to use my abilities of fire, shall we say. To good use. Search the raiders for clues to their identity. Does it really matter about their identity? They're all dead. I find yet another note on one of the bodies. And it does make you think if these fuckers had just used WhatsApp, it wouldn't have left such a paper trail. Our scouts located a town with no plague zombies and we want to move in. Ooh, that's because of me because I created all the plague zombies. Search the town for potential home sites. Find out who lives there and what their defenses are like. If they're vulnerable, demand tribute. You know what to do if they refuse. And remember what happens if you disappoint the boss. Don't be one of those people. Ooh. It's actually Negan. I'm just gonna search the other dead corpse. I'll be right with you, Greg. I find a crossbow, but my pocket's already full. So I come up with the genius plan of selling all of the dead guy shit straight to the scrappers. Imagine buying an assortment of knives and rucksacks from a guy that's literally ripped them off corpses inside your own house. After pulling off the most successful trade deal in history, I'm heading to the bounty broker, as I have an assortment of free shit to collect. And for those of you who don't know, that's actually where I got Big Norma from. That's why you don't realize that he's about Big Norma, right? She's actually an amphibious vehicle. What a beast. I collect my free shit, then activate more bounties. But you won't be able to see them as my face cam is actually in the way. Now I guess we just wait for the next legacy mission to spawn. I figured the best way to waste time was to loot the local neighbourhood, as well as removing the local residents. Yeah, that guy just wandered outside. There you go, you can stay out there now. Although if I were to take a guess, he's not too happy about me stealing all of his shit. But listen you bitch, right? I'm the sheriff around these parts and you motherfuckers have gotta pay some goddamn taxes. That's when I get another 
a call over the radio. Or die a horrible, meaningless death. Now, I understand you might not have realised this, but being a sheriff and a man of law and order, but I've managed to decipher this message and believe these might be the baddies. Well, CJ, I'm about to end you. Unless it is actually Carl Johnson, in which case I am more than happy for our cult to become his cult. I then temporarily claim this warehouse as an outpost so I can empty my pockets of all this worthless shit. And now with me lighter than the bulimic on Weight Watchers, I now gotta go chat to a couple of enclaves about these invaders. My first stop are the zombie veterans and I tell them, We're all in this together, I need you to be ready to respond when they show up. And they happily agree. In fact, so does the second enclave we stop at. Good on you. So I'm sure the last enclave I've gotta talk to will go equally as well. Talk to Amber, humble survivors. Oh, for crying out loud, miles away. Tell you one thing, boys, right, this share of legs, he's not great for the environment. The amount of bloody fuel I'm spending, my carbon footprint is through the bloody roof. So me and Big Norma speed our way across the map. God, it's a long ass way. We're still a thousand meters away. That's a kilometer for our transatlantic viewers. So not only are you getting action packed and comedic content, I've also joined the educational niche. And all I ask in return, is that you like and subscribe. We've also finally got a Discord. Shout out to Xavier for that one. And if you want to join, the link will be in the description. Feral. Yeah, get fucked. Big normal Rex a feral. Moving on, I get to the humble survivors. Hey, Amber. Elva named to name your group, by the way. Humble survivors. Don't be stupid. You can't stop the killers if you're smart like us. You'll start taking orders from them. Well, unfortunately, Amber, the game doesn't give me an option to be a little bitch. It also doesn't seem to want you staying in this town. She laughs manically, and I shit myself. Wait, what? I feel I may have come a bit underprepared for this, especially after this slag walks off a direct shot to the face. Uh, uh, Molly, Molly! But one shot takes me to half health. Stay down, stay down! I try crouching for cover, but I think they're dirty cheating hackers. Uh, some dodgy glitchy tactics! No, Laurel, you're going down, love! I turn to the only strategy that's done me well in Call of Duty lobbies. Camp the exit with explosives. Something's happening! There's some glitches! Finally one goes down. This is what happens when you kill people, I guess. I try to heal, but pop the wrong pill. And unfortunately, this prick is the quickest drawer in the West. Oh. No! No! Laurel! Laurel! They surround me and I take more hits than a 50s housewife. Laurel! But she digs deep and shakes the fuckers off. Pop some pills, love! But as quick as I can pop them, the more shots I take. I turn and headshot Mr. Quickdraw. I should have brought the people with me. I then put enough shots into the last woman to drop her to the floor. Fuck it, murder him! Jesus Christ, she almost killed me! Holy shit! Word must have got the CJ because he soon jumps on the radio. Well, that's what it is. Cannot be tolerated. DJ, mate, I'm telling you now, you're a bit of a prick. Shut the fuck up, this is my town, and I will defend it. Can I get a CJ is bit of a prick in the comment section? After taking more shots than a relapsed alcoholic, I really need a medical kit to continue. However, I know I definitely haven't got one in my storage locker, so I need to find some kind of medical outpost. Oh, army trauma tent. Yeah, I said they're bound to be able to get a medikit from there, right? Of course, it's not as if I jinx it. The only issue is, we do have a couple of zombies on the way. Jesus Christ, I hope I find a medical kit. Spoiler alert, but I don't. Termite grenade? I'll take that any day of the week. But I do abandon the warehouse we claimed earlier and set the tent as a replacement outpost. All of this just to empty my pockets of shit. At this point, I get another radio message telling me CJ's crew are rolling up on the scrappers. Who needs a medical kit? Not me. I've got 13 minutes to help the scrappers fight off the killers. Not really an original name, is it, to be honest with you? That's when I spot a lonely civilian who might need my help. Wait, who the fuck's that? Obviously, I always help a damn in distress. Although I may have assisted the baddies. That, that's a member of the killers. It literally says killers. You. Stop, right? What the hell is going on? You'd think she'd run towards the scene of the crime, but she actually just fucks off down the street. Did I just terrify her? Is that why she's run away? Ah, well, time to fuck up some murderous scum. Ah. I unload the best part of a clip into the chest of this pro. Oh shit! Zombies! I knock him off and go back to shooting the knobhead, but he can take a chest shot better than most adult creators. Oh, great, I'm out of ammo. So I get out my hatchet. Die, bitch, die! But she comes out swinging, somehow still kicking. Well, that is until I whip out my pistol. Got it. Headshot. Forgot I got a wet but gunslinger. Greg's then able to take out the last. This massive dub means CJ jumps on the radio again. You're most certainly not going anywhere. We'll see about that, CJ. We'll see about that. They must be close to town if they send out these guys to shake us down. What do we do next, Sheriff? We take them out. Once and for all. Hello, Greggy boy. Any chance you have a medical kit, mate? Some of us are really hanging out of our ass. Nope. Okay, great stuff. After a 47-point turn, I'm able to free Big Norma from the bar. There we go. But it's never without injury. 
Oh, shit. Sorry about that, Craig. On my quest for a medikit, I roll up on a wandering trader. Big Norma's got a loud cry, you know what I'm saying? But it turns out she's an ammo trader. Oh, interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So I buy a rifle and a handgun press. I then move to another medical tent in my search for a medical kit. But I'm unsuccessful. That's when the next mission spawns. Book to Greg of the scrappers to receive their grift. Grift? Gift. I'm gonna head there, and I'm also gonna recruit one. As we all know, why risk our own community members when you can recruit cannon fodder? I sort of need to go the long way around so I don't accidentally, like, kick off the mission, though. I get to the scrapper's place and don't even almost shit myself. Well, that was fucking close. I go check to Greg, but they haven't cleaned up the bodies from my last visit. We met up with some of the locals that you've helped out, and well, we managed to procure some goodies. I think it'll help you. What do you give me? Napalm grenades? Oh my god, these guys really do love me. Greg, you know what? I think you need to come with me. So Greg joins the team for one final time, and I'm sure he won't live to regret that decision. I decide to head back to base to see if I can recruit a third member to the team. Heavy's a big ass dude, you know what I'm saying? I think you'd be good to bring along, but I get too close to the mission spawn. Not yet. Oh, for Christ's sake. I don't know what I was expecting, but I didn't think the mission would just cancel itself. Can't believe I was that stupid. What a Dickhead. With all the free time in the world, it's time to mix things up a bit. I rip down the workshop I've only just built, then build a rain collector in its place. Because as the base gains access to water, I'll finally be able to craft my own medikit. Or first aid kit, as I'm just figuring out that's their actual name. So with Laurel fully healed, the finale mission finally respawns. Wait, we got more gifts? Come on then, let's go chat to him. Why not, innit? But it seems Greg is having an extended lunch break. Do not have anyone coming with me? Oh, that was a waste of 100 in front. You know what, I might as well bring Terry. Can't enlist additional followers. Why, where is my other follower then? Where is my follower? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. It's more poetic to end it the same way we started it. Alone, and hopefully not with a dead leader. I make sure to pick up the gift from the scrappers, and this time it's six pipe bombs. Can't enlist anyone. Oh my god, well, it looks like I'm doing the finale on my own. I don't need any help. I can do this. I'm an independent woman who don't need no man. The killers are hiding out in an abandoned factory. And as I arrive, CJ jumps back on the radio. We have a guest. Yes, you do have a guest, CJ. I'm here to fuck you up, bro. I start by shooting out the window to the factory, then lob in a napalm grenade. The only problem is I'm 90% sure nobody was in that room. You don't really think you can stop us, do you? Oh, I know I can fucking stop you, bro. I burst through the door and pop shots off without mercy. But let's be honest, if you've been watching me for a little bit, you'll know fire is my biggest ally. Oh, yeah. But all of the gunshots and napalm have attracted hordes of the undead. Okay, this might have been an issue. Things are looking bleak, but night is always darkest before the dawn. Oh, I think Greg's here. While the baddies are distracted by the hordes, I attack from behind. Got another. Oh, look, there's a, there's a jug. We're gonna leave the juggernaut there. So I dodge my way through the hordes back inside. Got him. And the bloodshed doesn't stop there. Got him, too. I find Greg again, but he seems to be injured. Yeah, don't worry, Greg. You're just gonna keep fighting, son. All right? No, 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 not no, Greg! Greg! I do the only logical thing I can. Greg! I'll save you, Greg! Maybe I'll save you. The grenade goes off, and thankfully, Greg is able to escape. Come on, Greg. I shoot another, and he drops to his knees crying. Fuck. But with a horde surrounding me, I decide to switch up the tactics. Pipe bomb it is! And I sit back and wait. No, in worst case scenario, he's gonna be crippled and turn into zombie chum. And best case, he'll literally obliterate. Why did that pipe bomb not go off? But mama didn't raise no quitter, so I try again. Don't worry, Greg, you got this. But the explosion never comes. Why are pipe bombs not working anymore? In the end, I have to shoot him in the back of the head like some chump. Kill CJ, the leader of the killers. Where are you, CJ? I put in my final clip and run upstairs to meet them. Wait, how are they down there now? So I decide to lob pipe bombs from above. Oh wait, hang on, are the pipe bombs going out because of the water? Did anyone else know that was a thing? Because I certainly didn't. And thankfully, the one thing water can't put out is four fucking napalm grenades. I headshot the penultimate from distance with a pistol. And now there is only one knobhead remaining. CJ! Stop right there! Oh, hang on, there's a- Thankfully, the juggernaut just walks on by. Then CJ rolls in and I try to take him alive. CJ, I demand you to stop. Eh, uh, the dude's trying to shank me. And as we all know, you shouldn't bring a knife to a gunfight. I then deliver the final blow with my hatchet. Got him. Are we done here? Nope, we're not done yet. Because he's reanimated. Which is the perfect excuse to kill him for the second time. Fuck you, CJ. And just like that, our leader Laurel climbs the magic rock. Like something out of Lion King. Except there's significantly less incest. She gives us a raising speech. About how we've come together and defeated evil like nobody ever could. And just like that, the Sheriff Legacy comes to an epic climax. She really cared for those people. Obviously not the ones she brutally murdered. In fact, if we're being honest, she was not really much different from the Warlord. But that's what you gotta do to survive the zombie apocalypse.